Hey, Nero. Nero. Look over here. Look over here. I see I'm talking to you. That's right. That's right. We're doing videos. Okay. All right. Cat boss. Cat boss. Yes, you're a good boy. <laughs> so this is my cat boss, Nero. If you guys haven't met him yet, he is a wonderful, wonderful boy, but he is hard to chain mail around. <laughs> anyway, hi, I'm Christian Ross and you've met me again on Octopus Do. Welcome back. Today's video is going to be a continuation of the series of the European 4-in-1. And what we're going to do today is take two pieces of the European 4-in-1, two separate pieces, and I'm going to show you how to put them together and zip it up. So it's really a way of looking at your pieces and figuring out which direction everything goes and uh, learning how to put those together. So for this tutorial, let's get started. Now you may wonder why this is an important skill. I think it's important because it's always a good idea to really be aware of how your rings lay together and what the pattern looks like when you go to pick it up and put it down because unless you're drinking a pot of coffee at a time, chances are you may not finish every project in one sitting. So it's good to know when you pick up and you sit down your project and rings flip everywhere, it's good to look at your project and be able to figure out which direction everything's going and which way you need to continue your project. So this is just another way of looking at that. Also, I found when I'm making really large projects, I'll take just a certain amount of rings with me uh, somewhere. It's like maybe I'm uh, going to visit a friend and we're going to craft together. And um, I'll sit there and I'll make like a little patch of something. But then when I get home, I want to join that patch to a larger one. And so this is what I'm going to be talking about today. For this demonstration, I'm using the larger rings that I've been demonstrating with, which is the 20 gauge, and it is not the 1 8th, it is the 20 gauge 15 64ths, which is right around a six millimeter if you wanted to do that. But really, uh, European 4 in 1 takes a wide variety of ring sizes. So basically, work with whatever you're comfortable with. Now what I've got here is two separate pieces that we were talking about and it's all kind of jumbled up as if, you know, this has been in your bag and uh, you just came home and pulled everything out and set it down. So what I do is I pull out my piece here and I figure out which way it goes. See, it stretches in this direction, move these rings out of the way and I make sure everything is lined up. Like this guy has a flipped ring here, but other than that, all looks really good. Okay, so I slide that to the side here. Now, I'm gonna take this other piece that we were looking at and I put it down and let's see, which way does it need to go? All right, if I flip everything around the way it's supposed to, like this one needs to be turned over, Okay, I know that this expands this way, so laying it here does not work. All right, so if I turn it here, okay, yes, everything is laying the way it's supposed to. All the little rings are going in the right direction. I want to look how this lines up. Do you see how the end of this row of rings is pointing up? and the butts of this ring are pointing down. So basically it kind of has, you know, the, this direction going. It has the top of the ring is lined up and the back of the ring is going down. When I look at this other one, the tops of the ring here are going up and the butts are going down. Well, that means that if I tried to put these together like that, it's not going to work because the fronts of the rings there where they're facing each other are both pointed up, okay? So I flip this around. 
set that like so. And now you can see how the back of this row of rings is on the downside. The front of this row is on the upside. And now if we're going in this direction, the back is down here and the front is up here. So if I put these together, they line up really nicely and just kind of meet seamlessly. The only thing that needs to happen is use the connector rings to join them. And when I say connector rings, do you see this row, the one, two, three row, same here, one, two, three. Well, that's the row that I'm missing in between here. And that's the row that I'm going to put in to zip everything up. All right. So what I've done is I have several rings, jump rings that I've opened already. So I'll just push those up here so you can see. And this is the European four in one. So you know that every jump ring that I add is going to go through four. And this is not any kind of speed weaving. So this is just adding one jump ring at a time. So I grab this and I'm coming in to go through those on that side. You see, I'll just back my pliers out of here so you can see what I'm doing. So now I've gone through the back end of this ring and this ring. And you see how that makes the butt of this ring that I'm adding on the downside and the front kind of on the upside. So what I need to do when I come over here is follow the same pattern, which means that I'm not going down. Don't go down. I'm going up through this side right here and down through that one. So I've got one, two, three, four. I'm going through four. Set that there, pull it apart so you can see what I'm talking about. And then I'll come in and with my pliers and close this jump ring. Let me stretch this out so you can see what just happened. By adding that jump ring, that set of rows is now seamless. It's all joined together. The next jump ring that I'm going to add is going to go through there. One, two, three, four. So I'm corkscrewing in. So one, two, and then up three. And it's, it's up and over three, four. Now I look because you see it got a little jumbled up while I was moving everything around. I'm going to look at it to make sure I'm not going through any rings that I don't want to be. Only going through those four. One, two, three, four. Whoops, slipped out. Now, do you see if I go down through there how this ring has to close that way. Well, I basically kind of painted myself into a corner. It's hard to get my pliers in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this back out. And here's where knowing the direction of your project is going to help you. I'm going to turn everything around so it's easier to get to from this angle. So I come in with my jump ring here. And I'm going up and over in that corkscrew. So one, two, and then over here, one, two, three, and four.
Always a good idea to spread everything out when you're done to make sure everything is right and you've gone through the right jump rings and it looks like I have one, two, three, four. And so now I have to put one more ring and the entire piece will be closed. Because you can see on the connector rings here, you've got, let's see, one, two, do it this way. One, two, over here you've got one, two, three. So I need, I know I need a total of three. So there we go. I go up through that one, down, corkscrew around. So I go down through that one and up through there. And if you get turned around, it's always a good idea to just take everything out before you close it because it's harder to figure out once you've closed a ring in the wrong place. So that got all bunched up. So I'm gonna start again. I go one, up one, over, two, down is three, and up is four. Jump in here and close that jump ring, and there we go. All right, if I move this around, can you even see where I joined everything? Well, I think I was working over here, but looking at this piece, I can tell I have made a mistake here. Can you guys see it? I'll just hold this here for a second and let you see if you can figure out what's going on. I don't know when and where that happened, but I'll go ahead and fix it real quick and let you see the process of doing that. So basically what's going on here is I have lost a row around here somewhere. So the first thing that I'm going to do is flip this over so that that side is closer to me. And do you see how losing that little bit of a row there has made this piece curve? Well, inadvertently, I've shown you kind of how um, adding uh, expansions and contractions work. All right, the piece that's messed up is right here because I have, well, I have this ring and look how many rings it's going through. Or yes, look how many rings it's going through. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, that's not right. So what I'm going to do is take that out. And yeah, I'm, weave, I'm going just right in the middle of the weave here, opening that up and using that corkscrew technique to take it out. All right, now you see I've got a big hole here. So I pretty much just come in here and open this one. And that opens up that entire weave. So I can come in and fix it. Glad you guys are here with me for this an unintentional lesson but hey it works it's a good one to learn looking at this at the rows we have one two three four rings here which is good then one two three that's perfect all right then one two wait a minute sorry yeah one two there should be three here and four which is one off the end so three goes through and it should be going through four jump rings, but because I'm missing part of this, it's only going through three right now, but we'll fill in that fourth. So one, two, three, I've got to put one more right there. So 
So now that row is complete. One, two, three, four. So this row, the connector row is one, two, I need three right there. Now, my connector row has one, two, three. Now, look at this, one, two for the next row. Three is going to go through those four. Now you can see I have only one ring missing, and that's right there. So it's the rest of this row. See, one, two, three, four goes there. And there we go. Everything is back to normal. It's where it needs to be and you cannot tell the difference. Flip it over. You can see it expands this direction. <laughs> there you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this impromptu lesson. We started out talking about just taking the two pieces of the European 4-in-1 and zipping them up with connector rings, but ended up fixing a problem that I hadn't seen before. So it's always a good idea to look everything over before you start making a video or looking everything over in your project to make sure that no matter how confident you are, <laughs> that it's done right. I hope this tutorial helped you in seeing what the weave looks like and being able to tell if something's wrong. If you liked this video, I know it was a quick one, give me a like. Uh, leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Once you've subscribed, you can always hit the notification bell so that you know when the next video is coming out. I hope you've enjoyed these European 4-in-1 chainmail tutorials. Until next time, go make something.